This bar would like to go way back when I was a young kid. My mother had six children, and she raised all of us on her own. And she taught all of her kids how to sew. So we all knew how to use the sewing machine. And because I'm a little odd, I loved the fabrics that she used. And she would make all of my sister's clothes for them. And then there would be little scraps and little pieces left. And I am a hoarder. And I am a pack rat. And I need these little pieces, not knowing what I was ever going to do with them. And I had two boxes full of them. And I don't know where they are today. I don't know how I lost them, and I'm very sad that I did. But ever since then, I have bought fabrics for my first 40 years on this planet, never knowing why I had this attraction to fabrics. And I would go to shops, and I would buy them, and I would collect them, and I have a stash, as we were talking about earlier, I had a stash that rivaled many stashes, because I've been collecting them my whole life. Never knew that I would ever be a quilter. My grandmother um, belonged to her local branches back in New Hampshire, and she had started a quilt. And when she got up into her 70s, she gave all the pieces to me, knowing that I like to collect little pieces of fabric. <laughs> and some of them were, I don't have them, and I wish I had them. I don't know what happened to them. I, I know what they, they were black and white, and it was this little pattern that she had done. And so when I got into high school, I decided to recreate the pattern that she made and to make a quilt from it. But I went and I bought all of these calicos. This is back 20-something years ago. And I started to make this quilt and decided this is for the birds. <laughs> <laughs> and I sit here and sew the same shape over and over again. But this is as far as it got. It never got finished. It's just the top. And because I'm a hoarder, I <laughs> stated in fact, but I still have it. And I, I just never knew I would ever do with it. In, in 1999, I had a friend named, I have a friend, not had, <laughs> apologies to Sherry, who is here, my friend Sherry Steiner is here. And Sherry worked for Strings in the Mountains. And every year of Strings in the Mountains usually chooses a signature artwork. And everybody should know if you're from Steamboat what Strings in the Mountains is. And so I was having dinner with Sherry, my dear friend Sherry. And my friend Madeline stopped in and showed us a quilt that she was working on. And Sherry said, that's way cool. We should do a quilt for the Strings season artwork. And so we went and we talked to the Strings people and the Strings ladies. Sorry. And they thought it was a great idea, too. And so I got Madeline this job of doing the signature art work for strings. And she turned to me after our meeting and said, you have to design this thing, because I don't know how to design a quilt. And I said, I don't know how to design a quilt. <laughs> but we worked it out, and we made up a quilt. And um, all I have is the poster, because of course somebody somebody, of course, purchased the the strings quilt. And um, I finally figured out what I was supposed to do with all of those little pieces of fabric that I had been collecting. I had no idea that you could make an art quilt. And the light bulb went on, especially after, at the end of the season when strings sold the quilt at silent auction, it went for $25,000. <laughs> I decided that I could do this. <laughs> so I started designing and making art quilts. And this is probably, this is probably the first one that I did. And this is called Survival. And I adapted it from I adapted it from a photo I took down in the Four Corners area of daisies growing out of some rocks. And you can see it's rather small. But I, that's the one I entered in the Brown County Fair, my first 12th entry in the Brown County Fair, and I won a Dog Grand Champion. <laughs> I got a couple of big blue ribbons to show for it. And so after that, and the strange thing, I decided this is exactly what I need to do with my life. And as Katie mentioned, I've entered the keepsake 
quilting challenge in New Hampshire three years in a row, and I won a ribbon three years in a row. And two of them are now part of their collection. And the third one actually hangs in Cape Pike's office out at Stream. Mm -hmm. This is my friend Lisa, who's going to help come <laughs> show some of my pieces. quilting tool that I have is not really a tool, it's my design wall, and I have an entire wall, eight foot square in my house, that's covered with flannel. So as I find fabrics that I like, I can just stick them up on a wall, and I can create that way. So this quilt actually happened because I found that piece of yellow fabric, and I thought it would make a perfect sky. And I just had it sitting up there and sitting up there. And I was trying to get to this one for a deadline. I had to get it into a show at the Rocky Mountain Quilt Museum. And I only used 10 pieces of fabric in that whole quilt. And it kind of helped me go a little faster than I did on my first piece in the, the strings quilt, which I didn't mention that the strings quilt that Madeline and I did took us three months start to finish. Even with all of the millions of little pieces in it, because we just had to work so hard from the top. Another simple quilt using I think one, two, three, five fabrics. <laughs> it's called the Lasso Fall. And all of the tree trunks are made from the same piece of fabric. It's actually a, a hand dyed fabric. I don't do my own hand dyeing because as I mentioned before, I just have this thing about buying fabrics and so next to quilting my Second favorite hobby is buying fabrics. <laughs> <laughs> and so we go to major festivals around the country where you'll find people that are selling their hand dyed fabrics. And so I'll buy those and I'll use those to create my clothes. The clothing is such a collaborative art form. You think that I do this all by myself, but it takes somebody to design the fabric and, and then I take what they have designed and usually lots of fabrics that lots of people have designed, and then I'm the last person that sees them and I create my art from their art. Ask your questions. I'm a, oh yeah, I should have mentioned that. I'm a graphic artist in my face, and I've been doing that since 1984. I've been a graphic artist, and I now work at Steamboat Design Associates here in yes. Steamboat. And my co-worker Tracy is also here. David, you might think and then that's what we have a bunch of items stitching. Um, stitching. Um, I thought, I mean, that's fascinating to see how that We'll get there. We got some better ones to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, I started to gain a little bit of notoriety from my quilting. And the Rocky Mountain Film Museum in Golden asked me to, they, every two years they do a show, a quilt show of just quilts by men. Didn't know there were that many, but there are, like 15. So. <laughs> <laughs> Nationwide. So we all put our quilts and we have a quilt show there. And so I created this piece for that show. And this is called Secret Valley. Again, it's adapted from a photo that I found. Oh. <laughs> and the pine tree, oh yeah, since you just asked about my quilt. The pine tree is done on my sewing machine. And I just went back and forth with the little stitches to make all of the pine needles on this tree. What I didn't know when I was doing this was that when you do that on your machine, it tends to your fabric up. Yeah. So when I had finished the tree, this side was about this long. That side was another eight inches. So I had to square it up and press it and trim it and fix all of that. Can we bid on that one? <laughs> no, that was just an exhibit. But it was on Alex Anderson's, he used to have a quilt show on the HDTV. And they did a profile on the men's culture, and that was in that show. So you can 
see on that one is a good example of the quilting where there's very little quilting in the sky, but there's a lot in, in the, the, the foreground. And what I should have mentioned at the beginning, I'm kind of going out of sequence, a quilt is defined technically, if you go to a quilt competition or quilt show, a quilt is three layers of material quilted together. Your backing fabric, whatever's on the front, and then whatever you have in the middle of your stand, whether it's cotton batting or wool batting or flannel. And I always use uh, cotton batting, 100% natural cotton. So what is on the top of your quilt, a lot of people would say that this is a quilt because it's little pieces of fabric all sewn together. This is not a quilt. This is a quilt top. It just happens to be sewn together with straight line stitching. You can applique your tops, you can paint your tops, which is a huge controversy in the quilting world now. And they actually opened up last year a new category at the International Quilt Festival where it's called a painted surface quilt, where you paint on one huge piece of fabric your design, put a backing fabric, put batting in the middle, and then do your stitching through it. But it, when Hollis, my, my friend Hollis Shadling does African imagery on her quilts, and she took Best of Show three years ago at the International Show, and it made the fun of the Houston Chronicle because it was the biggest thing, because all of the people said, that is not a quilt. The quilt was little pieces of fabric coming together. Well, really not. That is just a quilt. Top. When you, we got that clear? Yeah. <laughs> your tree stamps, do you hand applique those before, then you do all the top stitching on top? That is correct. But at the time I was machine quilting, I mean machine applicating. But I'm going to say, none of these that I've seen, I've tried to get up close enough there, they don't appear to be machine applicated. They appear to be hand applicated. Your edges are all turned under. Yes, it is. This one is. But this is all machine applicated. All the clubs you've seen so far are machine applicated. All right, where? It's turned on. <laughs> but I sew it with monofilament thread. So it's a visible thread on this. So these are raw edges? No, no they're turned You turn under. everything under. Yeah. And then you use a very, very tiny little itty bitty tiny microscope. That's, that's done by machine? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You turn these under by the nose. Yeah. <laughs> 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 regular sewing machine? Let's see if I have another one that's that way. But yeah. On the machine. Yeah. On the machine. Uh, is it a and if you would like to learn, my friend Madeline Bell is teaching a class tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> to help me with the strings belt on how to do a machine applique. Oh, is that a regular sewing machine? A regular, I have a Bernina 160, a regular home. Um, <laughs> see, I've, I've done a lot of machine applique, but I don't turn the edges on.
it's a number 10 on my brain. It's, a, it's a, like a, is it um, like a turning foot? Uh, it's a blind ham foot. So it's what you're really doing oh, with okay. a blind ham. Yeah. You know yeah. your blind ham yeah. sticks, but you put it as small as you can possibly get it, and you use the monofilament yeah. thread, and you mm -hmm. can't see the so the machine is, you're not needle turning it before you... Yes, I am. Oh, that's oh, that's the the, the, the machine a, is doing that little turning on No, I'm pushing that. Yeah. that. I am putting the edge under and I'm starching them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I starch the bordering yeah. seam yeah. under before yeah. And I do that the same now that I... I have the little mini iron that you guys with. And I started out, all of the quilts so far that you've seen have all been done on the machine. But I, every Wednesday we have a group that meets at the church next door that I joined. And that's not another whole story. And, <laughs> and my friend Liz Alden Divers, who was actually the Guild Springfield president, is a purist in that she hand does everything, whether she's piecing or applicating or quilting, it's all done by hand. And I would sit there and look at her and go, You are out of your mind. <laughs> it is so much faster to do this on the machine. Well, she was right, and I have now become. I do all my piecing and my applique all the time. It's supposed to. I actually met with some thread manufacturers in Houston last year. Who said no? It will not. It doesn't rot. It doesn't melt. It's perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. But I stopped using all these. Oh. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, this quilt came to me in a dream, and this is with luck. <laughs> the last one kind of sort of that I applique and did all the work on the machine. It's called Promises of Spring in the Bleak Midwinter. Ooh. And I can tell you the exact date that I dreamt it was April 1st yeah. of 2005. And I had this dream about this quilt where I wanted to do my assemblies and I wanted the leaves to appear like ghosts. <coughs> and I couldn't figure out how to do it. And I remembered a quilt that I had seen at Quilt Colorado two years before that. And it was a, a club about grapes and wine, and the woman did the wine glasses out of bridal tools so that they would be transparent. And so I went to our fabulous Walmart, <laughs> and at the time they had two colors of tool, white and green. <laughs> so I lucked out with my green leaves, and so this is actually tool that I just laid on top and then did the stitching and then cut them out. And this is the first one that I really started getting carried away with my quilting was turned around. And you can see all of the quilting stitches in the back of this. How many hours do you This I actually did this whole quilt in a month because I was inspired to do it. This thing is like bridal veils. I thought these were bridal veils. So when they spring this one out, take a look at the quilt and the fiber and see what all it is. And this quilt actually took me, gave me a second place ribbon at the International Quilt Show, which is in Houston, Texas, which is the largest quilt show in the world. And I took second place for art quilts for nature. When, when you said you, 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 you iron the edges on your did you do liquid starch? I can use spray starch spray and start. let it and put it in a bowl until it becomes liquid and then, and then just brush, brush it on the edges and put it back from the top. Straight line stitching, but I just used 
hundreds of those little pieces of fabric that I had at home, <laughs> and then quilted it, and this was also a finalist in the uh, International Quilt Show in 2005. So when I finished this one, I decided to do another abstract, but it was truly abstract, same type of, of technique, where I took tiny little pieces of fabric and just did this abstract design on it, and it's called, I won't tell you what it's called, because different people see different things in the quilt. Some people think it's puppy dogs, some people think it's dolphins or water, whatever, and what it actually was, are you ready? Yes. It was a hand playing a trumpet. And you'll go, I'll see it. I don't see it. But it's there. <laughs> it's a hand playing a trumpet. And I just manipulated the photo of Photoshop and abstracted and changed the color and, and turned it around and did lots of fun things with it. And, sewed all these little pieces back together, and I love the, the quilting on it. It's all done in circles, so it starts in the middle and just circles the way out. Because <laughs> this part, you're really going to be impressed. <laughs> I had this hanging on my design wall, and actually, the, I work with Lisa Fleming at Team Work Design, and Lisa was over at my house with her son, and Lisa's going, it looks like trumpet dogs. And so we asked her at the time, I think Quinn was nine, and we asked Quinn, what did he think that it was? And what do you think he said it was? That was a trumpet. He said it was a terrorist. Oh. And I said, it's what? And he said it was a terrorist. And there's the eyes. There's like this oh. turban on the head of oh, this man yeah. over oh, the face. My word. Yeah. Uh -huh. I have never shown this quilt in any show or entered any competition because all I can see is the terror. But I just couldn't believe that just as plain as day this little nine year old was, it's terrorist. <laughs> so you just wonder what nine year olds are thinking about. But I just, I've fallen out of love with that book and I just always show up because it's a great story to tell. <laughs> just changing thread, the different colors of threads, and I started doing the same color thread on the top and the bottom. A lot of these you'll see there's one color on the front, but the back usually blends into the back. But I decided that I love to look at my quilting, so oh. I'm going to get the whole side. And I also started with this, this is what is famous for a lot of these. This is the first quilt I started appliquing and piecing it together by hand. So it's all hand uh, constructed, and then the machine quilting on there. And this is one we awarded at the Echo Colorado, and it went to the International Quilt Show last year, won an honorable mention. But you still turn them over and start sewing. You still do that all by hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, have, I can't say I have no raw edge, because I have one quilt that I've done that is raw edge. <laughs> but everything is turned under and nothing is cute. So because I love that one so much, I did this one. <laughs> and this one I just finished this last year and it just was accepted to the International Club Show again for this year. So I have to send this off in two weeks, so it's going to be the last two weeks. And, and that's going to go into the Houston, Texas International Quilt Festival. 
Who leaves the bridal robe on it? And leaves the bridal robe on it. Mm. And they're they're huge. Some of them are eight foot square. I don't know how she gets them because I took her class and made the itty bitty baby one. <laughs> and this is the trail. I took this photo of the trail to the Fish Creek Falls. And you can see all these little pieces are in the, they're only held down by the black bridal pool. And then you just did because I really all that quilting which I'm familiar with, you just quilt all of that down. It just kind of stays there. Okay, here's the bad thing. These little pieces of fabric get all over the house. <laughs> <laughs> Everywhere. They're in the bathtub. They're in the you have a dog, which I don't, but the landlord does, and so the dog comes in, and then they're on the dog, and then they're in the hall. <laughs> <laughs> because the tool, of, it's just very delicate and fine, the stuff just falls oh, out, and it just goes everywhere. Wow. When you pick the tool, pick it up, and mm -hmm. start sawing, all those pieces yeah. shift, and... Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 But the design is completely different than it was. You run all these basting stitches through there, and because it is, it's clingy and the little pieces of fabric are clingy that they kind of, they tend to stick together. Yeah. But the, there's a few escapees from the asylum. <laughs> <laughs> in, in your heavy clothing, then do you even bother to take the basting thread out? Oh, I, yeah, afterwards I did. Yeah. I did on this little piece. This I don't know how it. Yes, hand basted. Yeah. So I did this little piece and decided, well, that's a neat little technique to learn. I've never used it yet. <laughs> After you do all of the, the, the quilting and you put it up and then get it square, at that point you, you cut it square and then oh, do yeah. your edging. Yes. The edgings are done. After the last final thing. The last thing. And then this type of quilting, obviously because you're not dealing with the geometric exact shapes, you can square it off. Yeah. And make it square. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's smaller and crop it. Exactly. Or you want to turn it into four. <laughs> <laughs> but I did love. I love the idea of the way that the little confetti things work, and so, yes, I've done that little confetti crop, but I've done it in my own way, <coughs> where I just used a little bit of the confetti. Oh, so, all of the leaves are just done with little pieces of fabric that I laid on top of this one piece of sky fabric that I liked and kind of arrange them and put, the, put a layer of Walmart now carries like 12 colors of tools. <laughs> <laughs> so I found a light blue flyer tool and covered it with that, basted it all down, and then hand applique the tree, which has hundreds of little pieces of fabric in it. The tree is on top of the tool. The tree is on top of the tool. Then I did another layer of confetti, and then I did another layer of tool, and then I quilted it. And I'll turn yeah, the second so layer was also blue. The, the second layer was white. Oh. 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 Devastated by that, and the, the judge's comment was, "Your perspective is off." I'm going. Oh. Obviously, you do not live in Colorado, and you're not in the <laughs> and you don't look Never up into every, every single tree. aspen tree because you're yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so you get the whole idea. Yeah. That, uh, and that's what's incredible about it too—is the perspective of it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. Is that's right. what makes you. Would you please mean. write that down. <laughs> 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 So I'm not going to put any more shows for a while. I'm, so I'm, I'm working right now on a spring aspen and a summer aspen. And then I have this fall one. And then I'm going to have to wait till this winter and I do a winter one. So I have a series of four. Now, if you had to do one of these, how many hours would it take you to do one like that? I don't know hours. But I can tell you it took me about a month. It took me about a month to do this. Because I was very excited. <laughs> well, I have a daytime job, so I work at nights and weekends. But if I had my brothers, I'd be doing it every day. So thanks for bringing us. So that one progressed to this, and this is all. This is my 
zebra edge. Uh, or that's upside down. Yeah, I'm throw this leaf on here. And that's just an a, another athlete. And, it, and I just laid the leaf on there after I sewed it together and put the threads on and then just quilted it, quilted it, quilted it. And this one will actually almost stand up by itself because it has so much growth in it. Take the mat. 
I know, I just, exactly. I just didn't know what to do, so I just had that fabric on the back. But what I have learned since then in doing, uh, the, I actually did, I saved Sally because she has lots of impact. I did uh, Sally before I did these others, before I started these flower series. So now that I've learned that I really love the way this thread work looks on the back, I will always use dark fabric on the background so the thread will look, because you can't see the thread work mm -hmm. because that, the backing is so busy. On um, the, the trees, I just decided to use the blue because I didn't, I didn't know how to change the thread colors for the yellow leaves mm -hmm. since I just actually did the blue right over top of them. And it would just have looked weird. So I just used the same color thread on that. And on this one, I did not follow my own advice of using a dark background. I used a light background, and so it doesn't have the impact. But this is my most recent finished piece. It has also been accepted this year to the international show. So I'm hoping for good things. And it's called Up, Up, and Away. And I'm hoping that they'll get the perspective. <laughs> It's a hot air balloon. <laughs> and it's not my color palette. I have never done a quilt with bright colors before, but I just, I just decided that I would break out of my little box so stop doing um, earth tones. And you can see the back. So the ropes, the ropes are actually, I did hand embroidery to do all the, the ropes that hold the balloon up. And this is just a little thicker thread for that one. How do you print your labels on the bag? On a printer. <laughs> 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 I mean, you, you you do them yourself, right? I mean, you don't ask like another company to do No, these are my own labels that I'm being a graphic artist. Right. I design them, and you can buy, Ooh. they sell it at Walmart. June Taylor makes paper that you can, fabric that you can run through your printer. And, that's so and they're supposed to last. Um, I have a lot of them to redo because of their faking on some of the older fabric I just that I would do that you. with, but apparently her new, the newest stuff she's come out with is supposed to last. And I hope it does because wow. my name is fading off of the back of these things. Oh, yeah. And some you haven't put them on. And some people's quilts don't have labels like this one that's going to the international show in two weeks doesn't have a label yet. And my friend Sherry's quilt that she got, what year was that? Mm -hmm. 2000 and still doesn't have a label on it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yes, and they're all on my website too, Dave Taylor. What information you put on your Name, address, phone number. Name as well. Not when you started to finish it. Some of them I don't want you to know when I started. <laughs> <laughs> this, the, this, they take, Sally took me, believe it or not, Sally took two months. It took me a month to piece her together and a month to quilt it. The balloon took me two months, a month to piece it, a month to quilt it together. Um, I had another piece that I sold, it's called Elk River Summer, that took me two years and two months to do. What brand thread do you use? It depends. I love to use variegated thread mm -hmm. so that the color changes mm -hmm. throughout the thread. So you'll buy like a blue, but it'll have eight different color blues mm -hmm. in it, all 100% I don't have a thread sponsor yet, <laughs> but if I did, I would name that brand. Like Sulky, anybody from Sulky here? <laughs> so where do you find this thread? Mostly at the large shows. That I, when you go to the, the, the Houston show, the international show, there are 1,200 vendors there that are selling thread. Anything you possibly need, you'll find it. But I also order threadart.com because thread is thread. I don't really need to feel it. Yeah. You know what I like. When I buy, I'll buy the whole cabinet. So I have three thread cabinets at home. Now. 
Because like I've done, on, I have a Bernina also, and they always say that there's one brand, I forget the name of it, but they always give it at the Bernina store. Superior. No, well, but they, they recognize that this is the only one that you should it's use, but it's a cotton poly blend. So you have no problem with cotton with no. your Bernina, obviously. Correct. And okay. Superior thread is superior. It is the finest, nicest thread that I've ever sold. I just don't like the color. Unless there's a superior wrap in the room. <laughs> <laughs> then I love your thread. <laughs> love the colors. <laughs> YLI. YLI. I love the YLI colors too. Yes. I have a question. When you see quilt shows advertised, like we used to go down to see something many times, Gold, Arizona has one. Yeah, some shows are invitation where a group decides to put on a show. Do they decide that they can have both kinds? I mean, regular hand quilt that they, it's all Every different. show is different. There are hundreds of shows all over the country. And yeah. when you subscribe to the Quilt Magazine, you'll see in the back, there's just a list of shows and entry dates. And right now, I need a personal assistant to keep track of it all for me. And most of the main quilters at the shows do have someone that just manages that for me. Mm -hmm. My friend Hollis, who I mentioned, her husband, this is his full-time job, is just to send her work out and get her back and just keep track of all of that because yeah. everybody has a date yeah. and a requirement. Yeah. At the, the Houston show, which is the last week of October every year, your entry has to be in June to, to send a photo up for them to just consider you. <laughs> So you go through that process first, and they weed out thousands of entries from all over the world. And there are 30 categories that you can enter, whether it's art or traditional, or all handmade, or made by two people, or made by a group. Or Why would you call yours? Mine is just art quilt. Art, art quilt. Art. Do you send pictures? You send, you send photos send first. Oh. Just to, to, for the international and the national level, because there are so many thousands of entries, all you do is send a photo. It used to be you send slides, but we live in a digital age, so now you just send your digital image on a CD. Mm -hmm. so on, consider. on your website, what do you uh, show on that? All of my quilts are on my website. All your quilts? What is your... Uh, David Taylor quilts. Oh, David Taylor quilts. Okay. Have you traveled the world besides the states for long trips? No, that'll be my first Australia. time I've ever yeah. left the country if I don't. Uh, I should go. I'm thinking about going. <laughs> I don't have a passport yet. <laughs> Historically, was quilting more for bed coverings, or did they do decorative art kind of quilting two or three centuries ago? I was surprised um, because I am a member of the local guild here. We just had a speaker come who said that as probably as early as the 1850s, 1860s, there were textile mills that were producing just fabrics for quilting. And you would, or I did not think that quilting had become that commercialized in the late 1800s, but apparently it was where you, they would manufacture quilt fabrics for quilting. Because I didn't think it started until the mid 1900s. I had no idea. That's why when Katie said, you want to come speak about the history of quilting, I found it. But, um, the art quilt started happening, I think, in the, around the 70s. There, there's a quilt that's been in my family that um, my, one of my uh, cousins has it now. My father never let it be hung because my, 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 he hated it. But it was, <laughs> it was about so big, so wide, and about oh, from the 40 here, and it was all velvet pieces. And my grandmother called it a crazy, a crazy quilt. quilt. <laughs> and that was done, that was done in the early 1900s. It's, well, they've been, it's, those have been around for hundreds yeah, of years. Yeah, it and has a lot of blanket from, stitch copies of stitching on it. There's lots of fancy stuff. Just really, yeah, yeah. But, um, okay, so that, and that, it could have even been the lady that had it, see how that was done. Because it's, it's been around for long. I look at, from what I do it more on the hard side, and if I showed these quilts and sold them, I would sell at a gallery, at an art gallery, not at, oh, yeah? at a quilt shop. 
Any other questions? And, the, and the, what I just found out is FedEx won't insure if you ship ground. What? Because I consider it art. Oh. And they won't insure art because art is just your, and your what it's a, a value to you. So it has no value art. <laughs> yes, I have a phrase that's done. In our local quilt show, where we put quilts in, and the guild does the insurance, you can't claim your labor. That is correct. You, you're only talking about the fabric and the, and the batting and the thread. Yeah, that is correct. Or what I mean, yeah. And most of them will only insure up to $1,000. That's what I've had the most. Okay. Average said all of my quilts are priced for way more than that. <laughs> Do you have any of your quilts in any of the art galleries around here? Not anymore, no, because I'm getting ready for my uh, solo exhibit. So I've gathered everything here, and I've had speaking engagements all summer. Where will the solo exhibit be? In Golden at the Rocky Mountain Film Museum. And when is that? Uh, February to May. Mm -hmm. And then my Provence show will happen in June, June to August. Any other questions? Well, thank you for having me. Thank you.